There is a particular Prophet of Allah whom the Quran gives a huge amount of attention to. Not only do we know about his adult years as a Prophet, but we know about him as a child. We even know about the events that led up to his birth. We know about his mother, his brother, his sister, his father-in-law, his wife. We even know the very dowry, the mahr that he paid for marriage. Mentioned around 183 times in the Book of Allah, this is none other than the Prophet of Allah, Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. And there are three descriptions that Allah Almighty gives to the Prophet of Allah, Musa, that were not given to any other Prophet in the Quran. The first of them, Allah said about him, وَأَلْقَيْتُ عَلَيْكَ مَحَبَّةً مِّنِّي I have cast the garment of love over you. The second unique description to Musa, where Allah said to him, وَلِتُصْنَعَ عَلَىٰ عَيْنِي so that you will be nurtured under my eye. And the third unique description given to this Nabiul Kareem, Honorable Prophet, is where Allah said about him, nafsi. I have prepared you for myself, Allah said to him. When did Musa alayhi salam hear these words? He heard these words from Allah Jalla Jalaluhu during one of the loneliest periods in his life. When him and his wife were pushed to their physical limits, traveling the earth all by themselves with basic provisions, just enough to keep them alive. Lost for direction, they see a glimmer of light. Musa says to his wife, Um Kuthu, wait here for a moment. Inni anastu naran. I see a glimmer of light, fire. La'alli atikum minha biqabas. Perhaps I will bring you a torch of fire from it. Aw ajidu ala nari huda. Or maybe someone will just give us some guidance to help us navigate this terrain. Unbeknown to Musa, however, he was not making his way to a fire. He was being called by Allah Jalla Jalaluhu to stand in the sacred valley of Tuwa to speak to Malikul Muluk, the king of kings, the owner of sovereignty and the possessor of all dominion, Allah Jalla Jalaluhu. He stands and he hears the voice of Ar-Rahman Jalla Jalaluhu saying to him, Ya Musa, O Musa, Innani an Allah, it is me Allah. And now all of a sudden Musa alayhi salam receives closure, answers that he needed all throughout his life. He had suffered and up until this moment he had no idea why all of this suffering came onto him. He was born as a male child and in the law of the Pharaoh of Egypt every male baby was worthy of execution. He was then separated from his mother at the age of suckling to be raised in a home that is not his. His sister would walk the bank and go to the palace of the Pharaoh and say, I know someone who can breastfeed this baby. And his mother would be reunited with Musa. Then Musa would become a man and would accidentally kill someone. Now he is a fugitive on the run, wanted by the authorities dead or alive. He is escaping the country in terror. Then he would find a wife to marry. And the mahr, the dowry, was 10 years worth of arduous labor. Why all of this suffering? He needed answers. And now as he stares into the evening night sky, looking above him and hearing the voice of the glorious Ar-Rahman Jalla Jalaluhu, answers are finally given to him. What does Musa hear? He hears these following words documented by the Quran. Qala qad ya Musa. O Musa, we have responded to your request. We have conferred our favor upon you yet again. When we sent inspiration to your mother, saying to your mom, place the baby in the cot. Then place the cot in the river. Then the river will take him to the shore. Where an enemy of his and an enemy of mine will take him, the Pharaoh. وَأَلْقَيْتُ عَلَيْكَ مَحَبَّةً مِّنِّي And I have cast the garment of love over you. وَلِتُصْنَعَ عَلَىٰ عَيْنِي So that you will be nurtured under my eye. إِذْ تَمْشِي أُخْتُكَ فَتَقُولُ هَلْ أَدُلُّكُمْ عَلَىٰ مَنْ يَكْفُلُهُ Remember when your sister, she followed you and she said to them, Shall I not tell you who can take care of this baby? فَرَجَعْنَاكَ إِلَىٰ أُمِّكَ Then we returned you back to your mother. كَيْ تَقَرَّ عِنُهَا وَلَا تَحْزَنْ So that her eye can rest and she would not grieve. وَقَتَلْتَ نَفْسًا And remember Musa when you killed someone. فَنَجَّيْنَاكَ مِنَ الْغَمْ But we saved you from retaliation. وَفَتَنَّاكَ فُتُونَ And we tested you with severe tests. فَلَبِثْتَ سِنِينَ فِي أَهْلِ مَدِيَنْ 
Then Musa, you spent many years with the people of Madian. Then you came to this place at the decree time. And I have prepared you for myself. So now he understood. All of his suffering in his life was not in vain, in waste. It was a preparation for this moment to become a prophet of Allah. And his heart finally settles. Muawiyah al Kushayri narrated that the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said, You, O Muslims, he said, are the last of 70 nations Allah has created. Yet in the eyes of Allah, you are the greatest and most noble of all of those nations. When you hear narrations like this that speaks of our virtue of Muslims, as Muslims, and how Allah loves us as an Ummah, you can't help but say, how do we understand the battered nature of our Ummah that is being beaten black and blue wherever you look? Wherever you turn to look at the anatomy of this nation, you see nothing but bruises, cuts, wounds, and hemorrhage. You turn to China and you see the plight of the Uyghur Muslims ongoing, the ethnic cleansing of an entire community. Then you turn to Myanmar, Burma, and you see the Rohingyas, their plight is continuing. And you look towards India, towards what seems to be a genocide that is making its way to them. But then you turn to the Muslims of Yemen and you see a famine that is threatening the existence of the entire region. And you turn to Syria, a decade-long war crushing our brothers and sisters there. You turn to Saudi Arabia, you see scholars and activists and people of Khair lingering in the dungeons of the Gulf. You turn to Palestine, you see corruption at its core and you see struggle at the other parts and a siege and an illegal occupation. You turn to Gaza, you see your biggest open-air prison on planet Earth today. You turn to Al-Aqsa and you see our third holiest site being desecrated before the eyes of the international community. Where is this favored nation? How is it that we are these people in the eyes of Allah Jalla Jalalu, yet wherever you look you see nothing but carnage and pain and suffering and blood? For those who ask how and why, the response is the same as what Musa received from his Lord when he wondered, why am I suffering? He was told, I am preparing you for myself. The same way that the suffering of Musa السلام, was not because Allah hated him or because Allah had abandoned him, but because he was being prepared to lead Bani Israel out of Egypt. We are to see our pains in the same light. Allah has not hated us, nor has he abandoned us. These are preparatory events to allow the Muslims to take center stage and to lead humanity. And the process of preparing Musa for leadership is the same process that will apply to us. Why do you think his name was repeated 183 times in the Quran? Hikmah Musta. What was the process of preparing him as a leader? Separated him from his mother, separating him from the people he loved. And we too will have to be in the process, separated from the people we love and the places we love, even if it happens to be Al-Aqsa. But Musa was reunited with the people he loved. And Allah has promised that we sooner or later will be reunited with the people and places we love. The waves of the river Nile that burst into his cot when he was still a suckling child are no different to the waves that bashed the Muslims through the Islamophobic industry all across the world. But the shore of the river Nile was near for Musa. And Allah has promised that our shore is just as near. He said, Those who oppose Allah and his messenger, they will be the debased ones. Allah has already decreed that I, Allah, and my messengers will overcome. We shall prevail. Allah is mighty and Allah is wise.